yo, if my wife cheats on me, it's my fault. But just know, I ain't got a wife in this not relationship video. Let's get to the show. Just know, my wife would never cheat on me because of Matthew 12 and 29. Or how else can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. He that is not with me is against me and he that gathers not with me scatters abroad. Wherefore I say unto you and all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven. But whosoever speaks against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So in short, this video is not about relationships and neither is <laughs> so in short, this video is not about relationships and neither is it actually about a wife. I'm single, but we are talking about how do we bind the strong man in the Western church and also in American Christianity. And this comes from three facets. We'll talk about the family structure. We'll talk about the church institution, and then we will talk about us individually. So who is the strong man in the family structure? So it begins with Christ being the head of the church, um, the church being the bride of Christ and the wife. And then secondly, the father God being the head over the Godhead being the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So when it comes to the family structure, how have we binded the strong man who is the man, who is the husband? So, so how I can say so confidently that my wife would not cheat on me because men and the husband is the priest of the household. He is the watchman. He is, in short, the sniper. He is the overseer when it comes to the spiritual realm of his house. So the only way that your wife, in short, um, if you have both committed to the baptism of the Holy Spirit and our true disciples of Jesus um, for Satan to come in is if you are spiritually slumbering as the head of your household. So first you have to bind me in some way. If that is uh, me sleeping, um, going into sin, um, not praying, not Bible studying, me being spiritually dead will open my wife just like how Adam not taking his proper authority and dominion um, to be the head over his household, the Satan uh, was able to creep in as well. And so this is how I can say with confidence, my wife would never cheat on me because I myself would have to already cheat on God with my lack of commitment for both of us to be falling prey to the enemy. So number one, the man, the husband losing his place and not um, being a protector, not being a spiritual guide and priest over his household. He opens up himself and his wife to spiritual attack. So don't open up yourself or your family to spiritual attack. Number two, who is the strong man in the church? <laughs> Number two, who is the strong man in the church setting and establishment? So the fivefold ministry that's listed out in Ephesians says that he has given us pastors, teachers, evangelists, apostles, and prophets. We have a history in Judaism and Christianity of killing off all of our prophets and killing off our apostles. So this is what we have done in the American church. And this is what we have done in the Western church. We may not be killing them off spiritually. I mean, <laughs> we may not be killing them off physically like they do in certain nations when it comes to the persecution of Christians, but we are killing them off spiritually when it comes to our own personal doubt and disbelief, right? 
So this is what we see in Western American churches is that you no longer have a five-fold ministry, but you only have three. And you only have pastors, teachers, and evangelists. But guess what? You cannot have the same gifting, spiritual authority, nor spiritual anointing, jurisdiction, favor, or grace as much as a apostle and much as an, uh, a prophet. Because uh, what you see is that we had a lot of fakes in short. A lot of people claiming to be prophets and nothing they said came to pass. But in the book of Jeremiah, it says if a man says something in the name of the Lord and it does not come to pass to stone them, we have no type of prophetic word, prophetic insight, accountability, where everyone says, God said this, the Holy Spirit said that, and it never had any type of fruit. And so we don't believe in the spiritual gifts of um, pastors, but also we um, are prophets. And we also don't believe in the uh, spiritual headship of apostles because of doctrines of devils that have been having seducing spirits and unclean spirits coming into the church. And so right now we only encounter scripture and we only encounter teaching intellectually, but salvation comes not in word only, but it comes in power of the Holy Spirit. So if you have prophets and apostles as spiritual watchmen, they are the first line of spiritual defense uh, before a church can get basically intercepted, then you can in short, take out a church. You could take out a whole generation of people because they don't see any type of supernatural power. You don't see any type of supernatural authority or actually uh, fruit or casting out any uh, demons, any healing, anything of miracles because you don't believe in the giftings. And that is the last line of spiritual defense and individual defense when it comes to blaspheming the Holy Spirit. You do not believe in the gifts. You um, say only the apostles, only the disciples could do this, but you don't stand on Mark 16, which said we would do greater things. And this is a commandment from Jesus. These are the works that will follow a follower of Jesus Christ. They'll cast out demons, they'll heal the sick, they'll baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. They will drink a poisonous thing and they won't die. They'll be um, bitten by serpents and scorpions and they won't die. And so when you don't have the spiritual manifestations, then you have the, um, in short, the sin of unbelief creep in and that kills off faith and without faith, you can't do anything. It's impossible to please God. So third and last, how do you bind the strong man and your own personal life? So the strong man in your life is the Holy Spirit. So you can actually bind, well, you can't bind because, so you can't really bind the Holy Spirit, but where the spirit of liberty is, there is freedom. So how are you binding the Holy Spirit to not operate fully in your own life? And that comes through Matthew 12, 43. And when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walks through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goes he and takes with him, with himself, seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first, even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. And so um, we see this in the church where you don't have like the movements of the um, Holy Spirit and like the freedom and liberty, but also you can grieve the Holy Spirit as listed in the New Testament, which can add to the sin of blasphemy, right? So um, how does the Bible outline blasphemy in the Holy Spirit? Um, calling any move or gifting of the Holy Spirit um, a unclean spirit or a devil's. So in short, the whole um, chapter I'm reading from in Matthew 12 is saying like a house divided against itself cannot stand. So 
in short, Jesus was healing. He was um, casting out demons and they were accusing him saying, hey, he's casting out Satan by Satan. And he was like, hey, how much sense does that make? <laughs> and in short, we're doing the same thing when it comes to the church, when we are doing moves of God and calling them um, heresy, calling them blasphemy, calling them demonic or satanic, or we're just muffling it by allowing sin, iniquity, and transgressions into our walls. But we are allowing sin, transgressions, and iniquity into our temples because we are the living place. We are the temples. We are the housing place of the Holy Spirit. So we are grieving the Holy Spirit when we let sin into our members and we are binding the strong man because we can't be both a den of merchandise, sinfulness, the demonic and satanic, and also try to have the Holy Spirit be held in us as well. So in short, we cannot cheat on God. We cannot um, cheat on our families and we cannot allow um, the church and the bride of Christ to play the harlot, to play the prostitute and to play they, basically the, bag of, the vagabond or the bastard. We need to operate as true children of God and come into adoption. We need to come into repentance for sin and we need to humble ourselves when it comes to how um, we're asking for grace, mercy, uh, because grace is the empowerment for us to overcome sin. And so likewise with the New Testament and um, Thessalonians says, we don't come in word only. We do not worship him in word only, but true worshipers worship him in spirit and truth. And we don't come in word only, but we come empowered by the Holy Spirit, that we don't encounter the gospel intellectually only being puffed up by knowledge, but we go out doing the work, being the hands and feet of God, because this is the kingdom of God. Jesus is come to judge the world to either grant eternal life or eternal damnation. So the Holy Spirit in John 16 says that he has three roles to um, teach us about sin, to teach us about righteousness, and to teach us about judgment, right? And so we cannot bind the strong man, bind the Holy Spirit by not giving way to righteousness, judgment, and teaching on sin. So don't bind the strong man in your life, but um, you can make sure that we, as the bride of Christ, don't cheat on God. <laughs> he is our husband. We are the bride. So this is how we can ensure that we are not <laughs> um, adulterous and we're not like the infidel. All right. So um, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And um, give your life and um, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and that you will be saved and empowered because you need to be born again born of the spirit with the baptism of the spirit, not of water, but being a new creation. And this is how um, we are new creations and we don't bind the strong man by leaning over to sinful desires, um, um, iniquity or transgressions by giving into the old man, but we are liberating the spirit of liberty, which is our spirit man. So, yo, thank you for watching. Uh, don't cheat on God. <laughs> and uh, make sure you're the watchman, the priest of your own temple, of your churches, and of your own family structure. Hey, until next time.